Hey, what up, boys? So, no intro today because it is once again that time of the month where I actually have some content and don't need to pad out the video with my ballsack and She-Hulk level CGI. And besides, no need to pad when, as they promised, we received another banger of a live stream. Our topics today were, of course, the Cleric Showcase, the day and night cycle, and Stephen Sharif gameplay that makes me want to rip my bullsack off. And I'm excited to break all this down for you today in as concise and easy to digest way as possible. But before we get into that, our patrons and I would love for you to grab yourself a Copa Cola because after this live stream, it leaves us with just one more showcase to round off this year. And if today was anything to go by, I think next month is going to put our hype levels in some sort of state of copium overdose. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, Let's begin! Ciao! So as usual, we got our reminders to go through, which is fairly short this month, as we actually have an extended 40-minute gameplay segment to look forward to. The cosmetic pack swap over, the content creator meme, the YouTube comment, but it's all very mild stuff that I'm not going to bore you with. Additionally, the studio update was all but forgotten about, so it seems we're not going to be hearing a peep from that for a while. They did want to give a shout out to their Extra Life livestream, where they raised $77,000. This money will go towards their charity, treating over 32 million kids. Intrepid have hosted five Extra Life livestreams now, and they happen every year around the same time. If you want to get involved with our community, the highlights for it are up here in the top corner, revealing some very interesting lore for what was shown in today's livestream, elaborating on the long-term implications for how the story of this world is laid out in the upcoming Alpha 2. Which brings us on to the main attraction. Now, as I mentioned, today's showcase is over 40 minutes of group gameplay, so I highly recommend you go check out the actual full 40 minute playthrough because I simply cannot fit all the details into one 5 minute segment. Today we were blessed with Stephen Sharif and two developers, Keenan and Trad. We saw the gameplay from Stephen's perspective, showcasing some basic cleric spells and class mechanics on a female Vec, accompanied by Trad acting as the group's front line on the fighter archetype, playing on the familiar Pyre male we've seen many times before, and finally Keenan gracing us with some ranger gameplay on the female Empyrean. The first thing you'll notice as this showcase begins is that we're in a whole new zone, the Alpine Forest, looking over the Riverlands, and there's a very good reason for that because this showcase today came with some super interesting night cycle and exploration mechanics that we'll elaborate on later when they eventually show them off. We'll jump straight into the gameplay as the bulk of this showcase was highlighting the group synergies between the classes and exploring this new zone. As you can see on the hotbar, the Cleric featured four spells. Chains of Restraint, an AoE damage over time with an added stagger effect, a basic AoE healing spell, a chain healing spell, and a single target heal which doubles up as a single target smite. The most interesting part of this Cleric showcase was the reveal of its core class mechanic. Conviction, an additional class resource generated through some abilities use. It is consumed to increase the potency of other spells. This creates a very active, aggressive healing playstyle which, as a monk main from World of Warcraft, is something I'm very excited about. An example of Convictions working in action is from their Cleansing Wave ability, bouncing between more players depending on how much Conviction they have. Additionally, we got a quick showcase of two new weapons today, the one-handed mason shield and the two-handed staff. Although there isn't much to talk about specifically with them in this video, we got some interesting information later in the livestream that we can use to create borderline pointless videos under the pretense of discussion and feedback for Intrepid. When Steven and his team cleared the top of the overlook of zombies and skinwalkers, he sped up time to give us a nice look of their night cycle and constellation mechanic. As you can see, the nighttime looks absolutely 
absolutely fantastic, really showing off the skills Intrepid's art team have to wield Unreal Engine 5's power. It retains the massively multiplayer feel, whilst clearly indicating its nighttime through subtle hue changes and ambience. As for these constellations, Steven confirmed they do have a lot of gameplay implications and although only minor information was revealed during today's livestream, I get the feeling this is going to be a core gameplay mechanic people use to navigate this massively multiplayer world, and massively it certainly is, as this whole graveyard zone is much much larger than your average area in an MMORPG. Continuing to travel through the graveyard, we got a really good example of the class synergies working. The fight set them up with a stagger effect, and Steven's chains of restraint stunned them, creating some really interesting teamwork-based gameplay. This is actually a mechanic that exists currently in Guild Wars 2, however, in a very primitive form compared to this, it appears once again Intrepid are building upon the base combat mechanics available in Guild Wars 2 to truly create a next-generation hybrid combat system. Before continuing on, the team sat and discussed the sitting and rest mechanics, asking for feedback on this particular system which we will elaborate on in a future video. He also implied that there will be some items you could use, alongside a campfire or bedding mechanic, so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw an expanded version of what New World introduced with their campfires. Deep into the graveyard, clearing multiple zones full of zombies, continuing their search for other constellations, I want to bring attention to the sheer size of it. It's probably a good indication of how multiple groups can coexist inside a zone without needing to engage in aggressive PvP constantly. It feels like because the older style MMORPGs were so, well, old, they never took into account how to create open-world PvP that hosts zones large enough for players to coexist, something Steven and the team appear to be putting great care into. Approaching the bridge and taking another rest next to the river, before heading across, they find, fight, and dispatch another new mob the Grave Golem. Overall, this showcase was pretty damn impressive and very, very indicative of a typical old-school MMORPG adventure. They ended this segment with some notes and questions that I'll use now to pretty much outline the plans for the channel over the next three weeks. Before we conclude though, Unreal Engine 5.1, a topic we covered on the channel last week, so that's up in the top corner if you want to check out the details on that, was confirmed to be implemented into the development of Ashes of Creation and should be live by the end of January. Now, because the bulk of this segment was mostly talking about the gameplay technical mechanics, it was far too niche and vague, so I think I'll reserve these topics to elaborate in a video in a few days. However, before moving on, they did mention the balance during this segment, explaining that Alpha 2, and especially the pre-Alpha showcase, isn't indicative of what the game's end balance will be, confirming Ashes of Creation is aiming to be on the higher end of difficulty, and it genuinely made my balls tingle to hear that. They rounded the stream off with some concept art, starting off building upon what they showed last month with the basic weapons and how they progress as you level up. Very little details are known currently, but I have a feeling these particular weapons are possibly Empyrean or Cleric variants, so whether we'll see each of these base weapons eventually progress through specific aesthetics makes me very excited for the artisan progression in Ashes of Creation. Next, they showed off another Goblin variant, the Goblin's Slaver, which was teased to encroach upon the human starting area in Alpha 2. Steven continued to explain how these slavers, depending on the state of the world, may be present in the starting zone and instead of killing the player characters, they instead knock them out unconscious and force them to escape their prisons deep within their camps. A pretty interesting idea and one that really oozes that old school sense of adventure where anything could happen if you let your guard down. Uh, they followed this up with the zombie Scholar, a mage variant of the zombies that we saw during the showcase, and although they look great in terms of quality, sadly I can't really stall out this script for much longer talking about zombies. So let's move on to the Winter Nith, a very early creature and one that has heavy ties into the world mechanics of this game, as it's rumoured the Tears of the Winter Nith are used as this world's type 
of gunpowder. Pretty damn interesting and it sends my mind into a spiral of wonder and excitement as to how a rare mythical creature that holds a rare material could be implemented into a massively multiplayer world. Finally we got a pretty cool lore drop with this final cultist model. Steven drew attention to his tattoos and posed the question, if we were one of the first people on Vera, where did these humanoids come from? Well, us as the player characters are actually coming into the world a few months after after the first expeditions. So these humanoid bandits and cultists are part of them first expeditions who turned independent or pledged allegiance to more powerful entities already inhabiting the barren world of Vera. Creatures like the Ancients. And that's pretty much everything from this month's livestream. Another really exciting one and well worth the slight delay. Now, as long as they don't delay the next one by a week, they never have done, so chances are low, we only have a three week wait until the next one. So I'll see you guys again for another breakdown in three weeks time whilst I pad out the rest of this month with pointless ramblings about clerics and healing. But Nark, I just got back from an 18 hour session farming boars and embers adrift. I swear, it's been eight months and this game still hasn't shown more than three people on the screen. And to that I say... If you think the game can't handle two people on the screen at once, then... You're high on copium.